Hello, everybody. My name is Larry Nib. I'm a program manager in the PowerApps mobile team. So you've probably heard from uh, Kavishi in previous community calls. Kavishi is still in the team, but I've taken over from her as the program manager for the PowerApps mobile app for iOS and Android. So I'll be joining these calls from now on. Uh, this is my first call, so I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'm not quite sure how these normally go, so I've got a few slides with a bit of content in, and I'm guessing there'll be some questions generated out of that. So please just go ahead and shoot the questions in the chat as soon as you uh, think of them. So all of my slides today, I have three slides and a, a video demo at the end. Uh, they're all on a common theme. Uh, you probably saw recently that we released a version of the PowerApps player that can support model apps. So this is the topic for the first slide. Uh, we previewed that in March, and then we released that for general availability uh, end of April. So just, just managing to sneak it into our April release window. The, the, the thing you'll see here, actually, it's not visible in the screenshot, but you'll see it later in the, in the demo video. So model-driven apps or UCI app framework apps from the Dynamics 365 uh, world, when those show up in the, in the Power Apps mobile app, app list, you'll see that they have a jigsaw icon. So that's the that's the way to differentiate which of your apps are Canvas Power Apps and which are model-driven apps. Uh, this one here has actually a, a custom icon. That support isn't quite there yet, but it's coming. So with the addition of uh, model-driven apps to the Power Apps mobile app, uh, you can find those in the apps list, same as before. All of the usual apps list uh, features work for model-driven apps as well. So you can uh, search, you can sort, uh, and you can pin to home. So the pin to home functionality, you can also use that with the, the model-driven apps. Love that functionality. That's almost always one of the first things new folks who are new to Power Apps ask, how do I get to this quicker? Yeah. So actually the Power Apps mobile app will sort, it has an option to sort your most recently used apps to the top of the app list anyway. So if you are using multiple apps regularly, you can still use the Power Apps um, mobile app app list to get to your apps and switch between them. Uh, if you're only using one or two, pinning to home is a good way to, to open those uh, quickly because you can launch it directly from your home screen. That works really well on Android. iOS, not so much. We have to use a small trick to make it happen on iOS. Uh, it, it actually broke in the latest uh, iOS 13.5 beta. So we had a bit of a panic moment to, to go around the loop with Apple to see if it was a bug or if they'd actually <laughs> removed the support for the feature. Uh, in fact, it was a bug and they fixed it. So we're, we're good again. I see a okay, question I'll... already for you, Larry. This one comes from Jamie. It's, uh, do we need to do anything to get a model-driven app to appear in the mobile player and reverse? Is there a way to publish a model-driven app so it's not available on the player? Yeah, good question. So you don't need to do anything special to get it to appear in the mobile player. Uh, there are a few model-driven apps that don't appear in the in the PowerApps player. Uh, that's by design because we have different surfaces which are the primary uh, mobile app surfaces that those model-driven apps should appear in. But those are primarily first-party model-driven apps. So I don't think that's going to affect you. In terms of preventing something showing up in the uh, player, we don't have that mechanism yet. There is going to be a targeting mechanism uh, that, that will come. And that's because we have a number of mobile apps now where model-driven apps can be surfaced. And, and we're aware that customers will want to decide which of those uh, it should be where their apps show up. So that's that's on the roadmap. It's It's not available just yet, but it's coming. Okay, uh, no more questions on that one, so let's move on. Uh, mobile optimized UX for model apps. So again, on the model apps theme, actually my background is I came over from the Dynamics 365 uh, mobile team. So I was working on the Dynamics 365 for phones app before this, and then, and then I moved across to work on the Power Apps mobile app. So I've, I've sort of transitioned across just as uh, model app playback has transitioned across from Dynamics 365 into the Power Apps player. Uh, in this case, we've been building, uh, and, and with large thanks to uh, Shahari, who may or may not be on the call, 
he was leading this effort. So we um, have been doing a lot of UX refresh work on the on the UCI app framework, specifically for the mobile context, because the the UX it wasn't particularly aligned with the mobile platforms that it was running on. So when you run uh, the UCI app framework on or model driven apps on mobile, it would help users feel um, the the experience is more streamlined if the if the app framework adapted its uh, presentation to the platform that it's on. So for Android and iOS, you have different patterns for things like button locations, button styles, uh, control styles, um, checkboxes, toggles, even the way that the even the way that the menus slide in and out or the um, you know the 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 Chrome on the on the window, the way that it's styled is very platform specific. So what we've done is we've actually spent quite a bit of time help, uh, helping the the UCI app framework, so the model driven app framework, to render itself in a in a sensitive way on the mobile platforms, so that it gives a more integrated and streamlined experience. That's outstanding. Yeah. So that's the the. The GA, that's now in GA. Uh, and the second half is year. I, I forgot this was on the slide. Um, so real time tracking and push notifications. So uh, this allows uh, the real time tracking is specifically with um, uh, GPS. So this will enable uh, apps, model driven apps that want to track on a, on a frequent basis the location of the device. And there are valid scenarios for this um, in, the, in a business context, particularly. Um, and then push notifications to allow um, custom notifications to be sent to the to the app while it's running. Very handy. I know a lot of use cases about the push notifications that pop up. Okay. This is going yeah. to get a lot of questions. I know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Very good. Um, so offline. Uh, offline in the in the canvas world is uh, save data, load data. Offline in the uh, model driven world, so this is more of a managed experience. Uh, it's it's getting better all the time. Um, we've been improving the reliability a lot. Uh, we've we've been fixing a lot of bugs, uh, so it's it's getting better. Um, and the the news now, which isn't on the slide because it wasn't updated I think um, so the we are just going into preview for supporting uh, model driven mobile offline with uh, CDS only orgs so this is for customers who don't use a dynamics license they're using a, a CDS license or a power apps license with CDS and they're able to get um, mobile offline in their model driven apps whether where those apps are hosted in CDS only orgs. So this is this is a this is a preview that we're starting. There's a link down in the bottom right hand corner of this slide. Uh, if you click on that link, that'll take you to a sign up form where you can sign up for the preview and then you can get in on the action. Here it is. So there's just a there's just a few questions and that will drop into my inbox along with a few other people. And then we'll we'll reach out to you to onboard you to the preview. Awesome. Uh, so we are and we continue to work on um, offline uh, features uh, to improve it, and this is in progress just now. In in October, so it says age two twenty twenty here, but you know we're aligned to April and October boundaries, so it'll be roughly around the October time frame. Uh, we're looking for bulk user ads for mobile offline. Uh, profile management. So this is part of the admin experience. This is improvement uh, people asked for. Um, it, it was that you had to manage your users individually, and that was painful, of course. So we're adding support for managing uh, multiple users at a time. Business logic. There's okay. So there's a big um, middle tier effort going on, which will improve the the ability of the platform to run business logic while offline, including things like validation. Which is important so that when you go back online, it doesn't immediately fail to sync because it fails a simple validation, and then you're in a stuck state where you have all this data that's stuck behind a, a validation that's failing. So business logic running on the device while offline, that's coming. Um, and then and so this is under this moniker of uh, offline by default. 
So it's more of a design principle that the framework should be designed in such a way that um, it considers itself to be offline unless it happens to have a connection, in which case it can then do online um, behaviors. So it's a, it's a kind of reversal of the way that we think about designing the app framework so that it's resilient to being offline rather than offline being an afterthought. So Larry, that makes me think when you're taking the paradigm like offline be by default here, like you talked about that, the amount of code or configuration that someone's going to need to do in order to make it offline is really small. Am I guessing right on that? That's right. Yeah, it shouldn't be. It should be a platform feature. Like offline, offline is some, is, a, is a state or a scenario that you can be in, and your use cases should continue to work in that state or a scenario. And you shouldn't have the right extra code to make that happen. So it's important that we adapt the platform to support that by default, and then and then the maker doesn't need to expend the effort like programming for that case. That makes sense. I see a, a couple big hearts here, people all caps, really yeah. stoked about this. There's a question from Uday about storage limits for mobile offline. Yeah. Uh, Canvas has 30 to 70 meg. Uh, okay, so I think the recommendation is between 30 and 70 meg for offline storage, but I'm, it's, it depends on your, your portfolio of devices in use at your company. So if you have larger storage available, there's there's no practical limit except what's what's on the device and, and what the operating system will give to the apps if you're using some kind of MAM solution. Um, so it's up to you. Um, I think the, the recommendation is carefully crafted at like 30 to 70 meg because um, that's a good average ballpark for all the devices out there. It's not necessarily specific to your organization. And how are records synced? Via HTTPS, <laughs> I'm not sure what's the, I didn't quite catch the question. In general, so the, so the actual underlying technology is, uh, so, the, so the mobile app is using, it's, it's provisioning a SQLite database to store data where the CRUD operations have happened offline. Uh, and, and so there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a journal effectively of changes that have happened in the, in the device. And then when the uh, connectivity is restored, then it will detect that and immediately propagate the uh, the changes back up to the server. Gotcha. So I imagine underneath the hood, you're doing all those things like, did this record get updated since I updated it offline? Who wins, et cetera? Yes, exactly. Cool. OK, so uh, okay, here's a short demo video. Uh, this is a, a little homage to Kabishi. No, you put a video in there. Yeah, there you go. So this is this is tying everything together. That was the offline status page. So this was uh, going into offline mode. This allows you to see some of the new uh, model-driven uh, app UI specific to the. There's the new calendar picker. Looks like a looks like a native calendar. Uh, these are this is styled for iPhone, so you'll see at the top of the screen here there was a save and discard buttons in in blue text. Uh, so this is very um, iOS style. Uh, it's all wrapped in the the iOS frame with the notch. Okay, so this is this is some of the uh, the mobile optimized UX. So you see it's. Uh, I don't know how familiar everybody is if, if this is mostly a canvas style call or if it's uh, if there are model driven app uh, developers here as well but you you should be seeing some new ux uh, patterns that that maybe you haven't seen before this is an inline uh, camera signing anyway uh, the, the 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 demo is to show the um, mobile ux a mobile style UX that we've added for the for the model driven apps. Awesome. Well, that's all I have. Um, any any other questions? Yeah. So, how about the field service and sales mobile apps? You know, I think I heard a rumor that those are built on top of the Power Apps mobile app. Is that really is that the case? 
Yeah, in fact, that's exactly uh -huh. right. So, so this effort to, if you think about it, we had the, the Power Apps app, the Power Apps player, uh, we had the Dynamics C65 player, we had Canvas mm -hmm. over here, we had Model over here. What we've done is we've actually taken the model playback capability from the Dynamics player, put it into the Power Apps player, and now the Power Apps player can play both Model and Canvas. This is part of our convergence story for uh, bringing together the two app platforms. So now you have a player base that can play both model and canvas. And what we're doing is we're actually launching, and we, we did in fact launch in April, uh, or 1st of May, I think it was, but who's counting, um, the field service, um, field service mobile app, which is actually built on top of the, in fact, that one was built on top of the Dynamics 365 player, because at the time that was the one that was ready and able to build and able to um, to run model-driven apps. But what, mm -hmm. since we've moved across the model playback capability to the Parrots player, we are just about to, and I think it's happening next week, in fact, we're mm -hmm. about to uh, switch out the uh, Dynamics-based field service app with the Parrots-based field service app. So take a, take a look at that. If you're a field service user and you're using the field service uh, Dynamics 365 app from the App Store, uh, keep an eye on it next week because we are going to switch out the, the app platform underneath. And all of these changes that we've been making, so the so the ability for the player to play model-driven apps, the, the improved UX on mobile, and even the improved offline on mobile, that's all designed to create an app platform that allows what we call the standalone apps to be built. So we have the, the field service uh, mobile app upcoming is a sales mobile app, so a sales-specific mobile app um, for Dynamics 365, also built on the Parrots mobile player. Uh, in fact, previews are starting for this uh, fairly soon. So if you're interested, uh, and if you have a contact with uh, Shrihari or Egal, then feel free to reach out to them directly. If you don't, reach out to me, uh, and I'll put you in touch if you're interested to participate in the sales preview. But yes, we are now we're now officially an app platform with also the player, not just the app web app platforms, but the player is an app platform as well. That's awesome. End to end coverage across all those different technologies in one player. Yes. Makes it very easy for the end user too, right? You don't need to need to open up two or three different apps just to bounce exactly. around and do your job. Exactly. And I think if we if we uh, combine this with um, Manuela's point earlier about the archive score, I, I love the idea of the archive score in the COE uh, dashboard. I think we should put that into the Power Apps app uh, so you can sort your app list by archive score. <laughs> I think that would work especially well inside Microsoft because there's so many uh, so many items that are in the list uh, that, that maybe are old or have demo in the name. Yeah, a, like, gosh, my development environment could use that all by itself. I'm sure everybody on the call feels the same way. Yeah, you, once you get like three, four dozen apps in there, it's like, oh boy, how am I going to find it? That's yeah, great. we got a plus one, plus one on the on the chat. So there you go. I'll, 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 I'll have more next that feature actually. in the backlog, right? <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? Yeah, there's uh, one there from Adam, uh, off topic apparently, uh, that the mobile apps can be placed in Teams Mobile. Any update on this? Well, yes, so uh, Teams Teams has a mobile app, and, the, and Teams itself can embed Power Apps, and the Teams Mobile app also supports those embedded Power Apps. Uh, I think the, the support for uh, things like access to device capabilities on mobile, that's, that's still in development. Um, but there is, there is generally support for Power Apps in Teams, uh, and, that, and that, that extends to mobile as well. So yes, that is supported. Awesome. Great. Th thanks for coming by here today, Larry. We appreciate yeah, it. I look forward me. to seeing how this develops, especially with that mobile. I, I already know one Power App I'm working on right now that's actually going to benefit from that really great as soon as that's available. So I'm going to be signing up myself. <laughs> sure. Uh, there's one more one more question. If you want to reach me, my my email is lnib at microsoft.com. So Perfect. that's how to reach me. And I wanted to leave you with a teaser as well for next time, or maybe for a couple of times in the future. Uh, I'm not going to say any more about it except dark mode. Gotcha. That sounds good. We'll see. Uh, 
I'm, I'm yeah, I knew the chat was going to light up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks, Sigma. Maybe we can have you back on when that happens. Then I'm sure you'll have some other updates to share at that point in time as well. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome.